Good morning and welcome to the morning show with Angel and Tina and our fabulous guests that we have in our virtual studio with us today. Tina, you are back from the beach. No, I'm back. I'm not, I don't have my beautiful view. I'm looking around. I'm going, nope, no view. But, but so all of you guys who have been following me for the last 12 hours and blowing me up, I went Paris. <laughs> And I'm alive. I went parasailing and whoo, I was so scared. But I re I know why I was scared now. So you guys all know my shoulder, right? My rotator cuff, my torn rotator cuff. That's why I was scared because I was afraid that I was going to hurt my shoulder. Why were you afraid you were going to hurt your shoulder? What's your, sh like, how do you hurt your shoulder parasailing? You're holding on to whatever things. Oh, it, but you can do that. Can't you do this motion? No, it hurts. You try to you try to hurt your rotator cuff and see what happens. Oh, sorry, lady. Sorry, sorry. Have you ever hurt your rotator cuff, cuff Tasha? Right? No, right? Okay, sorry, I didn't know. I just thought you couldn't lift your arms. I just thought it was a lifting. Well, like when you hold on to things, it, yeah. it still hurts. So oh. um, I have pictures. So I'm going to show you guys my pictures here in a few minutes after we introduce our, our guests and stuff like that. But it was... It was an amazing experience. So thank you guys for pushing me out of my comfort zone and literally pushing me off the cliff. <laughs> did you just have a blast? I mean, like, is it a bucket list? And you're like, yes, I did that. I did check. Um, so minor disclosure. Okay. I did have to have a couple of assistant drinks to help me. <laughs> <laughs> assistant drinks? They come in teeny little, little glasses. <laughs> I had two, very two? quickly. <laughs> so that was my little help to get off the edge. To take the edge off? So yeah. not just one little tiny drink. I tried one. I was like, you're like, mm, I need a second one. Oh man, I'd be on the floor. I'd be I'd be on the floor. I'd be like, somebody. And I kept telling everybody, okay, so if the sharks are coming, my co host said to, and I was, and they were like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows about that. I didn't say to do that. I just said, I saw this video that said, if you do that, they're not attracted to it. They're not going to come because, anyways. Okay, yeah. so if you have a little tinkle in your in yourself, the yeah. sharks are not so attracted to I made that. sure that you know I had enough to tinkle. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Sorry, Tina. Oh, okay. All right. Have you ever been parasailing, Vicky? No. Nope. <laughs> no, Tasha, have you been parasailing? No, I don't think Who's so. That? Okay, we're gonna because we're both indoor okay, girls. So we're Tasha, gonna talk you know about that's our behind you. That's why huh? you can sit in as your parasail. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm gonna close my door because my husband's talking in the other room. So I'll just be right back. I I don't we don't even hear him. So so I have pictures, but it's so funny because I wonder if I can share. I can hear him and it's distracting. That's all. Is it okay? Do I have access to share? Okay, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is us taking off, if it comes up. Oh, look, you've got pictures. You have pictures. Yay. I haven't seen these. Did you share them at all? No, I haven't shared them. This is the first time. You have to watch the Angel and Tina Morning Show to see. Oh, for the exclusive, the exclusive, exclusive photos right? of Tina parasailing. Yes. <laughs> Look at her holding on. <laughs> I'm holding on for dear life. For dear life, I'm holding on. Okay, so of course we're the first people up too, and I'm going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> oh, so you do hold on to the little straps, but your arm, your shoulder shouldn't be in pain. Well, it it's hurts. kind of. So this is where we had lift off. Okay. And I'm screaming, oh my god. At least we don't have video of her screaming because that's right? like what we would hear the whole time, right? We just get the we just get her narration of oh my god. 
<laughs> you. We were so high up in the air. Oh, Tina, I'm so glad you went. I'm so glad you had a good it time. It was so peaceful up there. You just seen miles and miles of just water and water. We were about 300 feet up the, up in the air. Um, I didn't see any sharks, thank goodness. Um, but it was very, very peaceful up there. Oh, look, the, 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 the balloon or the parachute has the guy's phone number on it, so you can it book does. it. That's so when, good. From the beach, that's what I kept seeing. I kept going like this. Remember, I kept going, and I'm trying oh. to get the phone number. Okay, so it's their own parasail that has the phone number. That that was smart of them. That's good branding. Like good, you know, book yours, book yours next. Oh, okay. You're gonna die when you see this. So when um when I you know we sitting there on the thing and he's asking everybody, so where are you guys from? And you know we tell them and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I'm a morning talk show host and a speaker and an author. He goes, a morning talk show host? And I was like, yeah, it's the Angel and Tina Morning Show. He goes, oh my God, I watch it every morning. And I <laughs> said him like this. Sure. <laughs> like a 25-year-old surfer dude. He had long, he had long blonde hair, like down to here, just like wavy. And he was like that Keona Reeves type and, you know, yeah. I was like, like, yeah, I watch the Angel and Tina morning show every day. Yeah, we're your type. We're definitely your type. Okay, so so Vicky, what what um so you've never been parasailing. Have you nope. what's um uh, like I don't know, like the most adventurous, adventurous, like outdoorsy activity thing that you've done? Probably zip lining. That was pretty adventurous oh, in Maine. Yeah. yeah. Zip lining is cool. another one on my bucket list. So that's <laughs> yeah. I haven't done zip lining either. That was Where also did you zip line? Fun. In Maine, if you're afraid of heights, that's definitely a, a scary one. So, yes, that was yes. One of those. Did you have other did... like through the jungle? It was like over the trees, so you were very high up. It was like you climbed up a wooden structure, and then when you were at the top, you just got the harness on and off you went. So it was pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Miss Tasha? Have you ever done something adventurous like that? Um, the most adventurous that I can think of is um. Uh, going hiking, hiking in um, the Wapio Valley in Hawaii. It was very beautiful, amazing waterfalls, wild horses. Um, so that's a that sounds it, beautiful it's nature of interest. So wow. what about you, Angel? I know you went parasailing. Actually, I've not done parasailing. Um, my son and my husband did. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait. You were telling me how safe it was and how fun it was, and you've never been? My son went <laughs> and told me all about it, and I watched. <laughs> oh, my God. I was sitting there telling her. I was like, okay. Just Angel you can do it. I can do it. No, back. I haven't done it. <laughs> like, like you said, make sure you take your phone so we can hear your last words. <laughs> <laughs> my coach and co-host the things that she says to me before I tell her I'm gonna die well she, I mean I know you, you're, you're gonna be fine you're gonna be fine people do it on vacation all the time it seems like pretty low-key my son did it he had a blast Jay who's afraid of heights went with him and had so much fun so it's all good it's all good I figured you'd what be fine the, what's the biggest adventure that you have done um I went whitewater or white river river riv, white river water rafting down the is it the browns canyon river here in colorado wow and that was pretty adventurous and probably mostly of course because you know you can die <laughs> um, <laughs> but that water did you did you um, tip at all we we didn't tip um okay. no we stayed in our boat we were good um but the water comes from melting snow it is freezing cold water. I mean, it is barely thawed water. It is so okay, cold. Okay, so did you? Where, when did you do it? In July, but okay. it's still freezing. Oh my gosh! Yes, 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 yes. Because it's uh, yeah. Have you have you been to Colorado? Either of you? Any of you come to Colorado? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's beautiful. The mountains are gorgeous, especially in the summer. And there's so many fun activities to do: hiking and mountain biking and you can take the gondolas like up the mountains and stuff. It's so beautiful. But yeah, the 
I mean, it's the water up there is from the melting snow. That's how it becomes water up there. And it's pretty darn cold. So we've done, yeah, we've done um, river rafting. I went scuba diving, which I thought was pretty adventurous, you know, for a girl like me. I freaked out in the water. I've never been to scuba diving either. But I don't know if I'll have to share my, my scuba story with you sometime. But yeah, mm -hmm. I was the girl that we got out into the water because right, you could do all this testing and everything. And my mask was getting water in it when I went. And so I was freaking out. And uh, my my little instructor, she was so sweet and so patient with me. She's and like, I, oh, dear one. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't condescending at all. She wasn't condescending at all. And just made me feel really safe and really comfortable. And I think that, yeah, when you're going to do something that's outside of your comfort zone, that having somebody there that's, you know, done it, that feels comfortable, that can walk you through it, can, I don't know, ease your fears and get you to do things that you never thought, that you never thought you would do. That, that was my friend. So she, she was like, oh, Tina, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So it's like a couple of pictures. She's like looking at me, just like cracking up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I was like, hold it off for dear life. As we're going all the way up. And she's like, Tina, you do know you can let go, right? I'm like, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm gonna, like I was holding myself <laughs> I was holding myself up like just shaking and she's like Tina there's a harness you can lean back and everything I was like no no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Like, no well, but you finally did relax right I, yeah I was like, oh. oh I'm always in there breathing and, and she's a hypnotherapist so she's like Tina breathe <laughs> but once I did that and we were up there for like 10 or 15 minutes. Once I did that, I'm like enjoying the view, all the different color blues in the water you can see mm. from way up there, right? Mm. It was just, it was a fun experience. So Vicki, where are you coming to us from? I am in Montclair, New Jersey. In New Jersey, all right, fabulous. How about you, Tasha? I am in the great state of Mississippi. In Mississippi. Mississippi. Tasha, is that your background um, behind you or is that virtual? No, that's my background. Is that your background? I love your little <laughs> hammock. What's your pillow say? It says, God is everywhere, so pray anywhere. Nice. Lovely. Good. Fabulous. Good. I like seeing people's backdrops, like their backgrounds and, and <laughs> where they are, where they are at. Well, pleasure to meet both of you ladies. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Tina yeah. has been at the beach. She finally has gone, like she went on vacation. And so we've all been living vicariously through her for the last few days. <laughs> However, today is day three of the angel birthday, 12 days of birthday celebration, because her birthday is Saturday. So we have one more day or so today, tomorrow. You want to get two more gifts, Angel? Are you getting kind of sad? Um, I am getting kind of sad. So yeah, I turned 50 on Saturday and Tina has been celebrating the 12 days instead of the 12 days of Christmas, the 12 days of, of Angel's birthday. And so every day, you know, for the last 10 days or 11 days, she has done something. I've got like this, almost like this Christmas stack, you know, presents right? of boxes. However, you were a little bad girl yesterday. She accidentally opened something that she wasn't supposed to open because she thought it was something else. But oh, no, so oh no, no, no. I would love to say that I didn't know what I was doing, but I, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> so right there, since you already opened it, you can I did. What you I had to, I, cause well, when I saw the package, I'm like, okay, I'm opening this. <laughs> so, <laughs> those two words are, are every woman's favorite words in the world, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so so Tina's been giving me, I mean, I've got a journal, I've got coffee mugs, I've been given popcorn and treats, and she sent dinner to the house. Great, you know, filled my yard with big birthday sign, which is pretty impressive because we're not even in the same state. Um, but I... She's like, look at her giddy. I got a, a cute little backpack from Kate Spade. <laughs> perfect size for you look at because you're so no, tiny. it's a little one it's a little one and I loved it I was like so oh, you know where you can that? wear that to right pardon me you know where you can wear that to right uh, you... the living room my bedroom the backyard because <laughs> that's all the places I'm going now that you have cleaned it out no to Disney when you guys go to Disney ever someday 
someday we're going to go to Disney. We were supposed to go to Disney this week and um, my kids, because my kids work there and the, the park is opened, but we didn't go because of it's a hot spot. It's yeah. not a good place to be in Florida right now. So we decided Speaking not to go. Disney. So Speaking thank of you. Disney, you are welcome. Tina. Disney. Angel and I, we, you know, we get on about half an hour before the show. We have a little, you know, powwow. And we discuss our things that are going on and catch up a little bit and whatever. And she's like, oh, my God, guess what? I found this amazing little neighborhood in Florida. And I told Jay, we want to, I want to move there. And she's telling me all about it. Tell them about this neighborhood. I don't know if you guys know that she has a very bad addiction to Disney World and to Disneyland. A very bad addiction. It's not an addiction to Disney. I just, I'm a, you know, my kids, my kids work there, right? All three of my kids. So, um, a big fan, fan. right? (laughs) So we, we, we drink the Kool-Aid, right? We just, we drink the Kool-Aid. And so we've been watching the Disney blogs. There's all the, like, there's a whole world of bloggers that are Disney bloggers. Right. Well, so that we can see what the park is like and see what's going on there, what the new protocols are. And so we can keep up because as a cast member, a lot of what they tell them is proprietary. And so instead of asking them and having them feel awkward about having to give me the answer, I'm like, I'll just go get it from a blogger (laughs) and then, and then they won't get in trouble and feel, we won't feel weird about it. How many t-shirts do you have? Disney t-shirts? I could wear one every day. (laughs) Um, anyways, I found, we found this neighborhood that is built by the Imagineers of Disney right outside of the Disney property and their homes are, have all these really fun, unique features. Um, but it gives you access to the parks and, you know, club 33 and you get to be, you know, all, you know, inner, you know, they do character events and previews for all the fun stuff so it's like you're on and and maid service and cleaning service and chefs like top five five five-star chefs and laundry I mean all of these services all and health insurance type of thing that like all inclusive that you you would never be have to leave your house this is something Angel would love because she's a freaking mole now I have a mole. I never. I have not left my house since March. Check her out. She's good. The maid can come. The housekeeper can come. The chef can come. You don't ever have to leave. And then you wouldn't. It wouldn't. I can. And I can see my kids all the time. I can see my kids all the time. Okay. So if you had your fantasy, your fantasy dream of where you would want to live, where would that be, Vicky? Hmm, that's a tough question. My husband's from Spain and we travel to Spain every other year. And there's a town in Spain called St. Sebastian that I just love. I think the town's magical. Mm-hmm. It's right on the water. It has everything that a beach town would have, but it also is a city right on the beach. So you feel like you have the cosmopolitan feel going out to dinner, getting dressed up nice, and you can just walk right onto the beach in the morning. It's just the best of both worlds in one place. It's really magical. Yeah. That sounds magical. And you've been there. How many times have you been there? Probably now about eight times. Okay. Wow. It yeah. sounds magical, right? Yeah, what about you, Pasha? I can't think of a certain location. The one thing that comes to mind is just um, like creating something, right? Um, all of my favorite people, maybe, you know, somewhere with access to the beach um and you know in close proximity just kind of sharing sharing life and doing life together so. I love that. all right how about you miss tina oh somewhere on the beach for sure but not oh my gosh myrtle beach was hot it was hot so i'm from san diego so you guys know i'm a cali girl at heart so california has a different feel than <laughs> south carolina <laughs> So you know, La Jolla is like a 72 with a slight breeze every single day. So that is my kind of beach, like 72 with a slight yeah. breeze. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. Some- We've beach, gone but- to Cancun. We used to go to Cancun multiple times throughout the year and it, you know, and it's humid. But the only reason it's nice is because you're in the water all day, right? You're in the pool or you're in the beach, right? Or in the ocean. And so you're in the water all day. I think when it's hot like that, yeah, you just have to be in the water. So it's great for, it's great for vacations. Right. Even we had um, done like family pictures. And so we had to get 
dressed in the middle of the day to do family pictures. And even, I mean, my face was sweating now, just wet from the humidity and it, you just feel so sticky. And yeah. um, it's like, you just have to be, you just have to be in the water. And so, yeah, I love the beach, but I think this Disney property that we found, <laughs> although it's not designed for, they say that the homeowners that, that own the homes there are, they're just part-time that it's their vacation home. And so they okay, don't tell them there. what the houses start at. They start mm. at two million <laughs> and go up All to nine. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just their vacation home. And this is their vacation home. So, so just for the record, this is not the status <laughs> that I am in. I'm just, you know, it's fantasy. This is the IRS's and, records. This is not the status that she's in. <laughs> this is not the status that we are in. That I can just have, you know, our little. $8 million vacation home on the side that I go and visit. I told her, I said, I could just go and, and house sit for everybody and kind of bounce from one place to another and I'll be good to go. <laughs> You're not going to be here for six months. I'll take care of your house. Don't worry. Right. You could totally, yeah, I know people that would, they could just house sit there from, from, from home to home, but they are, if you want to make changes to the home, it has to be approved. Like we're in a, we're in an HOA. So if we do, if we want to change the color of our fence or we want to put up a shed or not more lawn like we have an HOA, um, a homeowners association. The HOA that, is a lot different than what these people are saying. <laughs> there, if you want to make changes, you have to have it approved by the Imagineers because it's part of the Disney experience. And I was like, wow, like that's pretty, that's pretty fancy. I wonder if inside they have, you know how have you, you've been to one of those Disney hotels, everything is Disney, like the knobs on the bathroom, they're Disney and like all these things are Disney. The bathtub is like Disney, Mickey Mouse themed. <laughs> I could totally you know, live there though. I think I could do it. House that has that around there. I could totally do it. All right. So I'm going to, we're going to get to know our guests a little bit better. We're going to start with you, Miss Vicki. Right, I'm having a, my, my mouse isn't, there it goes. The mouse wasn't working for my screen, but Vicki is a Reiki master teacher. She's currently offering Zoom classes and personalized meditations to help people move through stress and anxiety in these uncertain times. She says we all have the ability to tap into our own inner healing, and she loves helping people discover this ability. She says it's empowering and reassuring. She works one on one. She works with people in one-on-one -on -one energy coaching, coaching sessions and also in groups. And right now, of course, all of her services are virtual. So kudos to you, Vicki, for pivoting. Mm -hmm. She says Reiki work can be done remotely, and it's exciting to be able to work with people all over the world. She says everyone can learn quick and simple Reiki tools to help them find their calm. And she offers a free weekly Facebook Live to try and reach as many people as she can with her message. So Vicki, we're super excited that you're here with us. Well, that's Thanks awesome. So I love that you offer that weekly for them, for people who yeah. can't do it right now, but still need that, that energy healing. I yeah. love that. Thank you. And they're quick and easy. They're like 15 minute Facebook lives to kind of teach you some really quick hand positions and tools to help you kind of find calm in a minute. So that was kind of my goal, give the people some really quick techniques that will work instantly and help them move through stress and anxiety. Now, so were you already doing that virtual you've been doing? What's that? You both, oh, look, both of us are asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> we're both excited. Right. So were you already doing virtual? I mean, was it an easy switch for you to say, okay, go, or were you already doing virtual before the shutdown? I was doing um, distance healing because Reiki is really kind of phenomenal. It sounds almost like impossible that you could do Reiki on someone from a distance. But when you start to think about like, think of, for example, the way music has changed, we used to go and buy a CD or a record and be like, Oh, I got my favorite music. And now literally you're downloading an MP3 and the music's just magically coming to your computer. Like, obviously we could unpack that and figure out how technically that's happening. And in the same way, if I'm tuning into you and we've synced up a time that I'm going to be sending energy to you, it's really the same kind of thing. It's kind of like dialing into your frequency and sending energy to you. And a lot of people, they say, mm, okay, yeah, that sounds great. But then when I sense that, I say, hey, you wanna try one for free? And they always get hooked because the minute you do that, the person really can feel your energy and 
it's just phenomenal because then you're able to have a Reiki session from your own home laying in your own bed and you don't have to physically drive anywhere or make an appointment and you have the privacy of your own comfort of your own home and it's really been a great service. I really think that distance healing honestly is my favorite type of Reiki because you're really just kind of meditating and getting into the person's space and then you're helping them move through whatever issue they have and it's all very private. And um, when COVID happened and I was seeing, I wasn't seeing clients in person one-on-one, -on -one, I said, wow, this is really an opportunity to offer more and more of this distance healing and also to teach more because a lot of people up until now, if you wanted to learn Reiki, you could take a Reiki, a Reiki certification class. You could get certified in Reiki one or Reiki two, but maybe you don't want to get certified. You just want to learn a couple of little tools to help you find calm and connect with your light. And that's kind of what I jumped in and started doing on Facebook saying, hey, Reiki might not be what you think it is. It's just a way to kind of tap into your own calm and find that when you need it. I love that. I love that you were that um, just, you know, that in tune to how you could serve your clients and how you could could grow and, and serve during, during this time. Cause I know a lot of folks really struggled with making that, with making that pivot. What has been, um, have you been working on any new projects or has anything new come out of this pandemic time for you, Vicki? Yeah. What was really interesting to me, I, I come from a background of being a television producer. I worked for two decades in TV and I worked for networks like Nickelodeon, Sesame street, and a lot of, um, women's networks like Lifetime Television and We TV and things like that. And my whole thing in the TV world was getting people to tune in. I did promos. I'd be hired to do a campaign for a new show that was hitting the air. And they'd say, we need some great promos to get eyeballs on screens. And so that kind of became my thing. I won a lot of awards in that industry. And I really was a pro at getting people to tune in to shows and get viewers to watch shows. So to me, I kind of always like to think of how can I use that writer producer mind mm. with the Reiki and get people to kind of see and feel what Reiki is with visuals and with different ways of kind of reaching them through that part of me. So to me lately, what I've been doing, I do these customized meditations where, for example, if you were a client and you reached out and we did a distance healing and you were having something in particular that you were stuck with we would go through a half hour of kind of talking about that and working with your energy. Then when we're off of that call, I would write and customize a meditation that's speaking specifically to you. It's saying your name at several points in the meditation. And then I have friends from the TV world, a music composer who's a good friend of mine, who then customizes a music track that goes with the meditation. So the whole thing is energetically balanced with the frequency of the music and the words and it's reaching you and your particular problem. And so during the last three months, I've tested this on like six or seven people. I have more people that are ordering these. And that to me is like real sweet spot because it lets me be the writer, the producer and yeah. the master all in one. All in one. I love it when it comes together yeah. all in, under like one umbrella, like all of your gifts and talents. And I think a lot of times clients will come to me and they're like, well, I do this, I do this, I do this. And of course, you know, how do you introduce yourself when you've got all these different um, titles and, but to be able to pull that all together under, under one umbrella, that's, that's impressive. And yeah. I think that's simplifies everything for, for not just you, but even, even your followers for referring you. Yeah. It's been and I great. love that you personalize them. Yeah. It's nice because it's like anybody can go on YouTube and find meditations but if you have something specific that's really bothering you that you're working through and we're, we're able to tap into that in a distance healing session, and then we're kind of working specifically on that and then saying your name through it, you just, you really feel like you're, it's all about you and it's very yeah. personalized. And I love um, that. yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. I really hope that a lot of people will take advantage of them because they think that the people that have tried them so far are really loving them. So how do we how do we connect with you? How do we watch your Facebook lives every week? On Facebook, my business page is Roncero Reiki. And if you go to Roncero Reiki on Tuesday nights at eight, I do the live Facebook class. It's a 15 to 20 minute class that I call Reiki right now. Okay. And I have a website. Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern? 
Yep, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's Ronsero Reiki. And um, I also have a website, ronseroreiki.com. Right, and Ronsero is her last name. So that, I was like, what What does that mean? And then I looked at it, I'm like, oh, that's your last name, right? So yes. Ooh, what does Ronsero mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it was like a special type of, I don't know, like something, like the name of something, but no, it's your name. It yeah. is, a personalized one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Ron Sero Reiki, um, and, um, oh, oh, shoot, what was I going to say? Ah, okay. oh, it'll come back, it'll come back to me, it'll come back to me, I apologize. Um, <laughs> anything else, anything else that you want to share um, before we introduce Miss Tasha? Sure, the one thing that really kind of struck me during COVID was when we were all told that we had to go into isolation, I decided to offer distance healing to whoever one ever wanted it. So on my regular Facebook page, which is just my name, Victoria Stewart Roncero, I held up a little, what's called a healing grid that we use in Reiki. And it's basically just like a 12 inch circular grid. And I said, if anybody wants distance healing, put your name below and I'll add you to my grid. And the first night there were 28 names. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. 28 people want distance healing. And then oh, at night, I literally put up the grid and you, people could see their name like, oh, Tina and Lisa and Angel and everybody's here. And it kind of made them feel like they really were getting something from it. But by the ninth week, I had 5,000 names for these grids. And I had to create 12 of them in my living room. And they literally took up the whole floor. And so... My whole family would be like a ritual every night. I'd be like, it's 1045. I got to do my healing grids. And I take them out and I do. And it was so amazing to me, every personal story that people would text me or write me or say, hey, can you add me to the grids? It wasn't people that were necessarily even being directly affected, like their health was not being affected, but they just were feeling scared. They were feeling uncertain. They were feeling maybe claustrophobic at home. And just having this place where every night on Facebook, they saw this growing and this light growing. It didn't really matter if you believed in Reiki or even knew what Reiki was. It was just the simple fact that like when we come together collectively, this light was growing brighter and brighter and brighter. And this was clearly a positive space in a negative time. So that was really phenomenal to see. How wow. Like After that. nine weeks, 5,000. I'm so glad you shared that Every story. Night? Yeah, it was, it was wild. If you look at my Facebook page, I, I post it every night and you see the grids growing from my the little tiny one that I'm holding up to like these 12 all over my floor. And um, it was really that the stories attached to each one. I didn't know any, most of these people. I knew like the first hundred were maybe my friends and family, but beyond that, it was just people from all over the world. And someone in Dubai kept, kept texting and saying, thank you so much. I'm feeling this and in China. And it was just, it was really the way that it grew just really validated my belief that you know you don't necessarily have to even believe or know what reiki is it's more of like this bigger energy this just like this light that unites all of us so it was really beautiful wow oh my gosh wow well i i'm glad i asked i was like there's something more there's something more <laughs> that i'm supposed to ask her but i know like i don't know what to say so I'm so excited that you shared that you shared that story. That was beautiful and how collectively we are able to come together and use the yeah. technology and have this impact. That is, like you said, when you first started was the people that were closest to you, yeah. but it, it took on um, beyond that and hit the right people that needed to hear that message. And I think that for so many of us um, can be eye-opening like yeah. We always just think of, you know, the people that are in our sphere and the people that are following us and, okay, I have, you know, X number of people that I'm connecting with, but really it's that old, remember the old Clairol commercial and they told two friends and they yeah, exactly. told two friends, yeah. but that's the power of, of social media that we can, um, in just a short amount of time have this incredible impact. So Vicki, oh, God bless you for what you're doing. I love this. Yes, I can't wait to see him on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, well, let's get to know Miss Tasha. She's a wife of 11 years, a homeschooling mom of three kiddos. She says, I simply operate in whatever authority my father releases to me. It looks differently in each season of my life. And right now, I'm the CEO of Tech with Tasha, 
a branding and digital marketing agency where she gets to lead a team of spirit-led creatives and introduce the world to the results of branding and marketing with grace and excellence. I'm Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, certified and provide courses, groups, programs, and mentoring and strategy as a wisdom in business strategist. She supports entrepreneurs who feel a faith, tug, push, launch into something so big, it takes the wisdom of God and kingdom collaboration to get it done. God has given her wisdom to partner in helping point entrepreneurs to his heart and remind them to the access they have to his wisdom. Tasha, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed hanging out and hearing um, the stories that you you and uh, Tina have. I love you guys, this connection. It's amazing. And thanks for sharing, Vicki. Thank you. Thank you. We have had so much fun. Of course, we started this right at the beginning of the, of the shutdown, thinking, of course, that it would be temporary as we all were, right? Oh, so I think few weeks. you thought more that it was going to be temporary. I did. I, I totally thought it was going to be temporary. The, be well, I thought <laughs> I was begging that it was going to be temporary, but here we are and we're kind of even starting to see like we had a little glimpse of going forward and it's like we're doing the cha-cha, right? Two steps right. forward, we're going one step back. And, but it has, it has brought, like Vicki was saying, it's brought people together. And mm-hmm. we do, we, you know, we end up being these little matchmakers, people introducing people to people they would never mm-hmm. have spent, you know, been in a room with, right? Here you are in Mississippi. You know, we're getting these stories like Vicki that, you know, oh, you guys, so-and-so changed my life. And um, I remember a couple of weeks ago, a guy was watching it with his daughter and mm-hmm. one of our guests like literally changed her life, wow. the way she looked at things and the way wow. she looked at herself. So you get these stories and you're like, oh, we are making a difference, <laughs> but you don't feel like that sometimes. Tasha, Tasha you are. What is one thing that you are making a difference with now that COVID has hit? Um, I, it's, you know, my business is already online, um, since COVID hit, um, it's really, uh, kind of ignited in me, um, the mission that I feel like the Lord has given me to make sure that, you know, um, I lead, you know, with Holy Spirit's light and help, um, entrepreneurs because I, I do branding and digital marketing, um, but I do it what I call spirit led, right? So led with the God's leading and anointing, um, and I'm able to um, help usher my clients into a space where they understand that, yeah, this is we're in a world of unknown, um, but when you are yielded to the Lord you can know what's going on when everyone else has no clue and operate in that um, and have that hope and be able to make moves and move forward and understand that you're in the right place when it's chaos all around. And so that has been one of the um, the kind of the prevailing things that I'm seeing. Um, I work one-on-one with my clients and I do what I call wisdom and business sessions. And so when we get together, we talk about, you know, how they're called in the marketplace. And then we uh, truly just um, seek the heart of the father for how they can make a more purposeful impact with what they do um, by operating in originality and creativity all the way through. Um, And so it's an amazing, amazing time of transformation, Um, whether I'm working one-on-one or whether I'm leading a team and we're actually branding, you know, helping um, these men and women uh, represent who they are um, in a way, like I said, that's authentic to them. So, yeah. You're walking by faith, not by fear. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. There's definitely a peace that comes from that. And especially right now, there is no peace in the world, right? The, it is, you watch the news, you, you know, I think for some of us who are planners, Mm -hmm. we have, I keep this wall calendar uh, that had all my speaking events, all my traveling on the wall calendar. And of course, you know, when this started happening, we're just crossing them out and crossing them out and crossing them out. And it was ugly. And of course, and I, and I felt that, uh, that, that anxiety of, okay, Mm -hmm. now what, but the world, yeah, the world is definitely at unrest. So 
um, working one-on-one -on -one with your clients, have you always done it virtually or did you have to make that transition? Yeah, so I've always done it virtually. Um, I've been working more one-on-one -on -one, um, during this season than I have because that's kind of been the forefront. It's like um, there's this this really push and leading to um, to come alongside entrepreneurs. And mainly I work with those who I call like visionaries and pioneers. They're doing something that really can't be, there's no blueprint blueprint for it, right? And so um, they're in a place that they're like, okay, what is my next, right? Because you can't Google it because it's new. Um, and so um, I find myself working with a lot of those clients and um, we're able to come together and like I said, seek the heart of the father to say, okay, what is the next step in your destiny? And let's work on manifesting what that looks like, um, you know, through, through a genuine space and let's see where we can go next with it. So I don't know. So is there something you want to share also with our audience today about what you've been working on? Um, I am one of the things that one of the things that Holy Spirit has been really um, teaching me on um, and walking through, um, helping me walk through and build out is um, unique identity and operating in that in the marketplace. And so I've been working on something that actually I'm launching August 3rd um, called uh, Brand with Grace, the eight week experience. And we're gonna spend time with entrepreneurs who wanna dive deep into uh, their identity, their influence or message in the marketplace, and then what that looks like as a visual brand. Um, and so we're going to walk through, um, like I said, it's going to be amazing. Eight weeks of, um, of prayer, of worshiping, of journaling, um, of coming together in a community and encouraging one another. Because one of the things that um, is like apparent right now is that um, the most impact that we can have is to operate in what we were designed to do. And I believe every one of us was de designed uniquely to do something in the earth to release that. And so, um, you know, say many of us, you know, uh, this whole shaking from COVID-19, um, many of us, either we were already operating of what we felt was kind of um, God's purpose for our life, or we were just kind of mm, just hanging around, working at this job, doing this thing. But somewhere in that, there's question and light bulbs of, okay, I haven't been doing this. And man, I actually feel good. Is that not what I was supposed to do? You know, <laughs> or, you know, now I've changed, you know, I used to show up and, you know, um, do the brick and mortar and now I'm online and wow, I realized that I have more reach, like, okay, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. So there's a searching and a questioning, but there's really a space um, where we're in this place of uncertainty that we can, um, you know, just uh, come together to really search out what is it that um, we're called to do? Um, what is that identity that we have in the marketplace? And then how can we um, work in that area? That's what I call the area of influence where we have the most transformation. What is that? Am I doing that? How do I do that? How do I get... Um, tap into the wisdom of God that is, you know, higher than everything. Like, how can I tap into that um, to where I can be able to make decisions and be confident in what I'm doing? And so that's what has I've been working on that's been on my heart. Um, and it's been I'm super excited to um, offer that um, as a group experience for whoever feels drawn to it. How do you want people to connect with you, Tasha? So you can find me at TashaGlover.com. Um, you can go there if you're interested in finding out about the Brown Grace Eight Week Experience. Click on the Work With Me tab under, and you'll see it under Brown With Grace. I love it. I love it. Well, you ladies I are doing this. I just want to kind of go into her background and just sit there and like sit in her chair and just read a book or something. Because <laughs> yeah. how often, how often do you sit in that hammock? Oh my goodness, that is a new addition. And um, you can see the kind of uh, the frame. So 
if I sit there, I'll be really close to the bottom because it needs to be up a little higher. So my kids sit in it more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's their timeout chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it's a beautiful backdrop and it Thank looks you. like it just is that, that Zen, you know, right? like, let's just relax and, you know, that's unplug, me. unwind. And I think that's so important um, for all of us, even though we are so connected on, you know, on our, on our cameras, on our t technology, on the internet and all of that. But there's also a connection that happens when we totally unplug from technology and I think that's for yes. for both of you there's just been like let's 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 unplug let's um from all of that and take care of this and yes. and I think that's a beautiful place for us all for all to be and especially as we're going into the weekend I've gotten really um disciplined about turning off my computer on Friday afternoon and yes. not turning it on again until Monday and I'll tell you that it's been it's like it's this internal struggle of mm -hmm. telling myself that that's okay you find yourself on monday having more energy and wanting to do more now that you have unplugged i don't know if i've got it yet <laughs> <laughs> okay so everybody's wanting to know how jay is doing oh yes oh yes thank you um so my husband is a bicyclist and he he goes on these really long bike rides, like for fun and just for kicks and giggles. He's like for they go, fun. <laughs> they, they do these 60 mile bike rides, right? Um, he and he's got get paid for it. He just does this for fun. He just does it for fun, 60 miles on a bicycle, right? And that's a little ride for them. Um, so he was out on Wednesday with a small group of buddies and had a spill. Um, he slipped on a wet bridge. It had rained while they were out. And um, they were on a bridge and they were getting ready to make a turn. And he had a pretty nasty spill, pretty scraped up, pretty bruised up. He's got, you know, scrapes on his chin and his elbow. He sprained his thumb. He's got a really big bruise on his hip. His leg is scraped up. He tore his jersey. I mean, it was, that was the, one, the, the most part that he was upset about. My jersey. His jersey has this big old tear in it. Um, uh, one of the one of the guys that was with them, they thought had broke his hip and had to be taken away in an ambulance. He did not break his hip, but he did have some internal bleeding that they had to have some surgery on, and um, he has some broken ribs. So he is in the hospital, expected to be there for a few more days, um, and then get some rehabilitation. It could have been a whole lot worse. Um, they weren't. Nobody was hit by a car, right? That's always like the. The scariest thing is that somebody's gonna, you know, have an altercation with a moving vehicle. But um, yeah, pretty much everybody. One guy hit his head. He had a scan, and he's okay. Um, but it was so scary because um, Jay doesn't call me when he's on his bike. He'll text me. He'll send me pictures. But I got a phone call from him yesterday morning while he was out on a bike ride. He went live yesterday, and. Um, and so I'm like, oh, okay, it's Jay and he's on a bike ride. So I've got to take this call. And, but one of the things that he is so passionate about is helping cyclists stay safe, right? And not get hurt. And so he has been doing for the last couple of years, just these little safety videos and finding ways for cyclists to say, stay safe. And, um, and he's never, and he's never crashed, right? He's never fallen. And so there was a lot of things that that kind of taught him and he did a video about it that he's on ice in ibuprofen and on the couch. So I told him I want him to stay there for a few days. And so thank you. Thank you so much for your prayers. I was an emotional, I was holding it together emotionally yesterday. Um, um, I didn't have the ugly cry. I thought it was coming, but apparently it, it's, it's not coming yet, but it will. I think it'll come this weekend. My mom's here. And so, um, well, I don't yes, know. But you started talking about your mom. You got a little emotional. I know. I'm like, I want my mom. Women, we just need a good, ugly cry every now and then. We just do, cry. just to release it. So just today is my daughter's birthday. We were supposed to be in Florida. Oh, happy, happy birthday. <laughs> Visiting them, but we canceled that trip. So we'll do a virtual, we'll have ice cream together later and yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a week, right? I'm turning 50. My husband had a crash. My mom's coming to town. I'm not seeing my kids. Like, like, like everybody, we're having all the feels 
right? right? We're just having all the feels and, and so and allowing ourselves, birthday, you know, it's a, it's a big birthday for you. You're and, I, and I was okay with it until Tina put a great big sign in my yard and it was like this big in my face. <laughs> Angel, you're turning 50. <laughs> well, you were all but, about it. But I think, uh, I think I'll be okay. I think, <laughs> she's like, I think, I think, can I push my day until June 30, July 30th? Instead? <laughs> can we have 30 days Look, of my birthday? <laughs> and your backpack, just like a five-year-old. <laughs> Backpack, backpack. Um, like well, Dora, ladies, right? You look like Dora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> um, ladies, thank you so much for coming in and hanging out thank with us you. and and being that bright start to our day and and our audience's day. I want to just say hey to our sponsors that make this show possible: the Zandra TV Network that streams our show, puts us in all the streaming channels. Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Chromecast, and Roku. And Roku alone has over 29.1 million active accounts. And you can stream the Angel and Tina morning show with them. Also on BizVod and more. If you want to start your own digital streaming program, if you've got content, don't just post it on social. Go digital streaming with Zondra TV Network. We also have our, our clothing sponsor, Boutique. Uh, Bliss by the Lake Boutique. Are you wearing her clothes? It is. It is. I love it. I love it. Um, they do these little live, little fashion shows and little. Um... Have you been watching her? Yeah, she's so cute. She is so I cute. Know, I seen one of them yesterday and I was like, ooh, the cheetah thing. I need it for the show. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Yeah. So follow them. This is also, this is our nice little banner that highlights Zondra TV Network is our sponsor, Bliss by the Lake Boutique. And then of course, Sonic Virtual Assistants. I can't, I can't go a full 24 hours without hearing somebody ask us about virtual assistants. You know, where do you get one? Should you get one? How valuable are they? All of this stuff. Sonic Thank VA. I have so much stuff I have going on. What am I gonna do? Get right? VA. They I are VA starting here in a couple of weeks and I'm so excited to be able to delegate and to do that and to give it, give my to don't list to somebody so they can do it. <laughs> it is so exciting when you can take your entire list of things that you wish you could get finished or aren't doing because you don't think you have time. Um, so you can add things to your to-do list because you can put it off, but to have it go on the list and within 24 hours, like it's done and you get to stay in your lane, right? You get to do self-care. You get to take care of your VIP clients. You get to focus on uh, generating revenue and generating exposure and let somebody else, so affordable. I'm telling you the oh packages. Is... You guys are gonna be, your guys are gonna be like, why didn't I do this before? Why didn't I do this before? So check out sonicva.com um, and he let them know that you heard about him. Tomorrow. Is you he? Guys, yeah, he's gonna be one of our guests tomorrow. So you guys can, Get on, ask him questions, ask him those things that you have been wanting to ask about a VA and about starting with a VA because he's going to give us some good to tools and tricks on what he uses and how he can, how you can delegate your business. I love it. Well, I'm speaking on the Global Elevation Summit later on this morning in just a few hours, um, teaching you how to grow your business using media and exposure. Um, if you guys want to private message me, I can give you the link for, for that. Um, reach out, but grab your, grab your complimentary media guide. We've got your media exposure tracker, helping you to stay on track to get 100 media features and featured on over 1,000 media platforms in in one year, right? You can be on over a hundred platforms with over a thousand media features. We have press release ideas, ways to connect with media, how to guarantee media exposure, all online at makeyourbigimpact.com. Hopefully you'll go and grab that guide today. Um, and then follow us and connect with us on our next, our upcoming Connect Summit coming up on July 28th. I am so excited. We have some amazing guests coming on. I'm excited. Excited to hear Joe. Joe Kinnamore is the CEO of Banner Season. Um, something that helps build client relationships is what I teach. Um, helping you create those clients and those relationships that you need and helping you create those virtually. I teach you strategies and tips on how to do that. Um, I think I have a little um, up, up in the game thing, especially what Angel always tells me. She's like, you have to 
teach people how to teach or how to create those clients virtually. So I teach you that, how to build those relationships that truly matter, turn those clients and connections into raving fans and referral partners so you can work smarter and not harder. But I teach a webinar every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You guys can join me. It's turning connections into cash flow. Um, PM me or direct message me, or you can just text the word connection to 26786 and you can get a free registration ticket. That's to, uh, connection to 26786. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern on my turning connections into cash flow webinar. We are Angel and Tina on the Angel and Tina Morning Show, where we come to you live every weekday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. We will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you guys so much for joining us today. We love you and we hope we had brought, given you a bright start to your day. Bye guys. Bye.